Hi, it's Chris here from Tech Tablets with a hands-on here in Windows with the Cube iWork 8 3G. It's an 8-inch tablet that has a Baytrail Z3735F in it. That can clock up to 1.8 gigahertz, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and these are the drive speeds here for the eMMC embedded multimedia card that it has here. So not exactly the fastest drive there, but this write speed here is even faster than my Surface 3, which isn't too bad. What is a little bit low here, the 4K write. 4K reads are okay. You can see the uh, operations there. They're not the greatest, but it isn't too bad for a drive there. Now the battery in this model is updated from the original iWork 8. We now have a 5000 milliamp hour battery in here. And according to the battery bar stats here, so far, it actually seems to be even larger than that. It's looking more like a 6000 one, according to the capacity that it's detecting there. This is higher than the Chewy VI8 or the Tech Last X80H that I've tested other 8 inch tablets with the same chipset in them. So as an added bonus, you do have that 3G there, but there's something really, really odd is you can't access or use that within Windows here, which is strange because normally you do have access to that hardware. So you see here, there is no 3G listed. There is no mobile internet. I can't turn it on. It's not listed in the device manager either. So that's a bit odd. I'm not too sure why that is happening. So you can see that that eMMC card is listed as a generic end card. No idea what brand that is, of course, so it's just a generic. Who knows? So a bit of an unknown there, but it seems to work all right. And under the sensors, we just have the accelerometer and no GPS on board this one at all. The other thing to note is the IPS panel. I don't know the make of it at all. I looked it up on the internet, the hardware ID, couldn't find out. It's a good screen though, very bright. Nice viewing angles. I can just show you the brightness here. So that's maximum brightness and it dulls down to about there, which is good kind of level for reading in the dark or if you're gonna be using it at night. It's not too bad and, and quite, quite bright there. So that's good, the brightness. It's not good when you have a dull screen, you do not want that. You want the brightest screen as possible that you can get. And there's really nothing else here to show you in the device manager, other than the, well, it has the two cameras, the two megapixel cameras, nothing wonderful at all. There's the two speakers on the rear. I will get in and show you a quick demo of those speakers. I've already done that in the Android hands-on. Uh, the micro SD card slot is just on the side here and it does take a hundred and twenty eight megabyte cards gigabyte cards i think my one is uh, broken so i can't use that but i do have a samsung 64 gigabyte evo that works fine in here and it's easy enough to remove the sd card micro sd card you don't need super long fingernails or anything like that screen rotation is working fine and we have a mini micro hd port here and an OTG micro USB, which I'm using an adapter here to run my wireless keyboard and mouse. The good thing about this tablet as well, that has a, is a big pro versus those other eight inch tablets like the Chewy VI8, is you have this. So this is a tiny little DC plug, which frees up the USB port there, which is really good. So you can use both, so you can charge and use both. Something you can't do on those other tablets. That is nice, but also note that Cube don't include a power adapter. They give you the cable, and it's a USB plug to this tiny DC one here, but they don't give you the actual adapter you need. So if you've got a Samsung mobile normally, or another mobile that does have that USB plug to charge, then you'll be okay there, but otherwise you need to buy one. This charger I'm using here at the moment is actually a Pipo W3F charger. That will work. And you don't actually get supplied with an OTG adapter that's not included in the box either, which is odd. And if you want to switch over to Android, that's easily done by just pressing this button 
this icon here, sorry. It originally starts out on the desktop. You have this here that's called Win to Android. So clicking that here, switch to Android, and it will switch right over. Now the screen's got like a wavy effect on it here. It doesn't actually look like that in person. That's something to do with the camera and the IPS panel. I don't know what that's called. That effect that's happening there, that sort of banding that's going on there is something to do with the recording. But uh, that doesn't actually happen in person, so you don't need to worry about that. This, this green is, as I said, it's bright, it's good. Nice viewing angles. Very good little 8-inch screen there. And it's sharp enough. Uh, what I'll do is just go in and show you a little bit of the internet here. And show you how things load up there. Just keep in mind that my internet connection has not the fastest. So that might be slowing things down. Just go to bbc.com here. And you can see that, yeah, that one's really fine. No scrolling here. No issues there. Very fast, no stutters. i11's great for that. I do recommend you use that on these bay trails. Chrome can be a bit more of a, a hog, resource hog, on these tablets with two gigabytes of RAM. It does sort of lag things down a little bit there. Just click on the link. And see if there's any video maybe that I can look at here. I will actually just jump into YouTube to test out the speakers. I just run a bit of music here that's not going to give me any copyright claims. So I'll just go and run some carbon based life forms because they don't bother about chasing up any claims there with me running their music in my video here of YouTube. So I'll just run one of these here so we can hear the speakers. So I'll just increase the volume up to the full volume. I'm just probably going to distort. Okay, so volume there is definitely it's loud it's loud enough it is much better than the horrible speakers on the Chewy VI8 or the Tech Class sorry no the Tech Class ones aren't too bad but the Chewy VI8 both models the Windows original Windows model and the dual boot model they have horrible speakers this is a little bit better but they are still very tinny there's no bass and hardly even any mid-range there just a little bit of course but very tinny and you might have noticed and picked up on the video there that at full volume they do start to distort. They kind of vibrate a little bit. But they are 10 times better than, than the crap that's in the Chewy VI8. I mean those speakers, they, they should just... I don't even know why they bothered putting them in because they're that bad. Honestly, they are really bad. So here are the 3D Mark scores here. These are not the best scores I've seen on this chipset. For some reason they are a little lower than normal. I have seen around the 7,500 mark and around 14,000 for the Ice Storm Unlimited score there. So for some reason those are a little bit less. Could be down to drivers, optimization, maybe they're using an older driver here. I haven't bothered to update the Intel driver or anything like that. But overall in 3D games, which I'll show you soon, store games, it shouldn't really affect that. So even though the scores are lower, it... Uh, it's going to run all the store games fine, which I'll show you now. So here's some Dungeon Hunter 5. Just playing a little bit of this game here. Quite a uh, popular game, Hack and Slash. Runs well on the tablet. And really does sort of suit this kind of format. Windows Store games are the perfect kind of games to be playing on these kind of tablets, I feel. So there's no stutter, well, there's a little bit of stutter now and then, but I mean it's very playable, runs really well. And I don't think you'll have any issues going through this whole game. And other store games.
Now some Ash Phelps 8 Airborne. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller to control the game here. It does work with the accelerometer as well, so you can just move the tail around to steer. Let's go straight into a game here. Much easier to play on the controller, I find. And because of the screen resolution being so low here, these games, yeah, they, they have no trouble running at all. Nice and nice stuttering. Should I say, not that much stuttering. There's a bit of stuttering just then. It's probably not the smoothest I've seen this game run. Definitely is a bit of lag there. I'd say the frame rate is dropping down below 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, Fraps does not work on the Windows Store games here, so I can't see exactly what kind of frame rate it's running at the moment. But it's safe to say that it is, yeah, it's getting a little bit low there. Crash. And just to test the accelerometer, I will actually pick the tablet up here, disconnect it, and resume here just with touch only. And, and that works fine. Okay, it's not happy having the controller disconnected there, so it's not accelerating. But it does work fine there with the touch controls there. Just not in this instance because I disconnected the controller, so it's not happy at all. Next up, I'll try a bit of GTA San Andreas. Seems to run alright. I've just left it on the default settings, so you can probably tweak that up and increase the resolution maybe. But at the moment, just here with the default settings they've just given me, it seems to run fine. And I'm just using the Xbox 360 controller here again. Decided to plug that in. It's a bit easier for the videos when recording them, rather than having my hands on the tablet there and the angles and the reflections and everything. It just seems to work out a bit easier this way. A little bit of lag there. I mean, it's not as smooth as I'd like it to be. But definitely playable. Okay, so a very quick look there at just a GTA San Andreas here. Oh, see that lag there. So there's a little bit of lag. A little bit choppy. Definitely not the smoothest. You can probably tweak the settings down and lower things down a little bit to keep that frame rate up and make sure it's nice and smooth. 
So after that bit of gaming there, I do like to check the temperatures to see what the chipset got up to. And if you have a look here, it actually got quite hot. Almost too hot. 88 degrees. I mean, that's not bad, that's still fine, but the, the tablet would have been throttling. So that was maybe why I saw some of that slowdown on GTA just there. Probably because it got a little bit too hot there, had to throttle down the CPU speeds there to keep the temperatures under control. So you can see there that uh, 88 degrees and the average was, actually the average there is quite high. I've been running this for the whole time I was gaming, so it does get quite warm there, definitely. I'll just check now with my uh, thermal probe here that I've got, infrared temperature probe, and see what the actual temperatures are on the surface of the tablet. This is just here around the screen, so that's getting up to about 40 degrees there. And in Fahrenheit, that's over 100. On the back side of the tablet here, it does feel warm around the area where the ports are here. Perhaps I've given it too much time to cool down. Definitely is a little bit warm there to touch, but it's not gonna it's not burning or anything like that. So around 40 degrees. So it does heat up, it does get warm. That's normal, all the tablets do that. But there was a bit of throttling there happening, getting up to 88 degrees. And I guess for extended periods, that could even probably reach 90 degrees, maybe if you want to game for an hour or so. All right, so that's the hands-on hands -on there in Windows with the Cube I Work 8. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up there. That will really help. And so overall, the tablet is fairly decent. It's disappointing that the 3G does not work within Windows. It works in Android, but you can't make any phone calls in Android either. And the screen is really good. It's a very nice screen, good colors, really good brightness, and IPS viewing, viewing angles, of course, there, so that's all good. Uh, thank you for watching the video, and do subscribe for more up-and-coming videos if you are interested in these tablets. I'll have plenty more up-and-coming. Thanks for watching. Hopefully catch you in my next video.